first and foremost, you don't want to use jargon in your writing. Today on How to Write Better, we are talking about jargon, specifically business jargon. Now, I spent a long time in the corporate world, climbing the corporate ladder, and some of the terms that we're going to discuss today, I'm sorry to admit, I used on a daily basis. Now, let's talk about why we want to avoid jargon, specifically business jargon, in our writing. Well, first off, It makes our writing imprecise. A lot of the jargon that we use, these are common phrases that are just tossed around that aren't precisely what we're talking about. We always want to find the words that precisely describe what we are talking about or specifically what we're writing about. Also, jargon makes us feel inauthentic to the person or persons to whom we are communicating, whether that's an email or you write an essay or a blog post or a book, we don't want to come across as inauthentic. Well, how do you come across as your most authentic self? You'll use the words that you would use if you had never learned this vapid jargon in the first place. And ultimately, it's unoriginal. It's not you. You heard the jargon from someone else, and now you're carrying it around, and you're littering all of your writing and your conversations with these phrases or these words. The first word I like to talk about is impact. Okay, we often say impact or something is impactful in our lives. Well, that's not even possible. Something can't be full of impact the way that someone could be beautiful because they can be full of beauty. And even if we use the word impact as a verb, it's more accepted now than it was 20 years ago. It's not as precise as using words like effect or influence. I was influenced by that product or service. I wasn't impacted by that book. It affected me in a particular way. I remember back in my business days, I would always encourage people to, yeah, just reach out to me when you get a chance. Well, what the hell does that mean? I meant email me or contact me or call me. If I'm being more precise, then I can set the proper expectation with the person across from me. Not reach out to me, call me, email me, stop by my office and see me next Wednesday. That precision helps me communicate exactly what I want to communicate to the listener. Now, of course, I started this video with a little bit of jargon. Did you notice it? First and foremost, very common, right? But what the heck does that mean? First and foremost? Well, that's like saying first and first. You would simply say first, and then you move on with the sentence. We say first because we're beginning something. This is new. We're we're going into something together. I don't need to say first and foremost. It's just first, cut the foremost, and move on. Which kind of reminds me of sightseeing. That's not really business jargon, but doesn't that seem a bit redundant? What does it even mean to sight see, as opposed to what? Sight feel? Sight hear? Sight seeing? Huh, it's a little strange. But at the end of the day, we all use a little bit of jargon in our everyday vernacular, including at the end of the day. What a vapid corporate term. And I'm sure I'm still infected by it from time to time, but every time I catch myself, I sort of wince. Why would I say at the end of the day when I could simply say finally or ultimately and then move on? At the end of the day, if you want more writing tips, you can download my free ebook. It's called 15 Ways to Write Better. Just click the link in the description. You can read it in less than an hour and you'll walk away today with 15 ways to write better, 15 ways to improve your writing today.